Hi everyone, Mark Kwok here. Today I wanna to talk about something a little different and it's about the comfort zone and being comfortable with the uncomfortable. This has been something that's been on my mind and I, it's a journey, but having you guys on this journey as I go through it, I think will be helpful for me and hopefully for you guys as well. So maybe it's working from home, maybe it's the pandemic, maybe it's, I don't know, just life stage, but I've started to become quite comfortable and that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not working or I'm being lazy or whatever, but maybe I'm just repeating the steps of something I'm good at. I know how to do my work efficiently. I know how to be good at something. I have my circle of friends. I'm pretty healthy. All these sort of things I've worked hard to get to and now I'm kind of basking in the glory of that comfort. And don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with being comfortable. In fact, so many people are not comfortable that it's very, I should have gratitude that I'm here. But the problem with that is there is a, a big gaping hole in my life and that is around things like growth or you know sharpening your skills. Unfortunately, that requires being uncomfortable. And I feel very strongly about this because I think we as a society, everything in our lives is making life easier, right? Like whether it's a DoorDash or devices that make getting information and things so easy. Eventually, you're gonna be like that guy in Wally -E who's just fat and sitting on a chair and like doesn't do anything. But let's be real, like that's, we all know that's not really what we wanna aspire towards, right? Like when we watch a movie and we watch someone like having this hard time and then like rising above it, that's when our tears come out or that's when we feel the most inspired. That's when like something rumbles inside of us. So I do wanna make this practical. I wanna introduce five things that you should maybe try to do to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. The first thing is baby steps, taking that first step. One of the laws of physics around inertia, momentum, these sort of things is the moment you're in motion, it's easier to stay in motion. And when you're at a standstill, it's so easy to just stay at the standstill. This is like tried and true physics, and I think this applies entirely to our lives. The moment you take that first step, as in like you buy those watercolors and you put it to the canvas, all of a sudden it's much easier to actually start the painting. It's motion versus no motion. I, just get into that first motion of doing something that you normally don't do. This is my ask, that first baby step, because it'll be so much easier moving forward. Number two, become a beginner at something again. We have worked really hard to become good at something. I don't know, whatever that thing is for you, whether you're an athlete or a cook or whatever, you've become pretty good at that. Now, it's easy to stay there because people give you accolades, people give you kind of respect, even money, for being good at that one thing. But try to become a beginner again, it's really effing hard. And there are a lot of people that are above the totem pole who have worked so hard on that one thing that you're just starting, that you feel humiliated, you feel below. But that's the whole point. When you become a beginner at something, what happens is you gain humility, first of all. You eat humble pie, which sucks, but let's be real, humility is a good trait, and I think everyone recognizes that. Two, you sharpen your stone at something else and you have an opportunity to become good at that thing too. So I truly, truly encourage you to eat that humble pie and see if you can become a beginner or something that you've always wanted to look into. Number three, try an experiment of becoming a yes man or yes woman. Always, in any day, there are decisions to be made. Yes or no, right? You can do that thing or you can not because you can put it off or whatever. See if you can experiment with one day a week or one week in a month, or I don't know, what, whatever time limit you wanna put for that, the parameters, and try to become intentional about being a yes man or yes woman. That means if someone says, hey, we, let's do that thing, you have to say yes. You've like made an agreement with yourself saying, no, 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 I, even if I don't wanna do it, or it doesn't benefit me, or whatever, I'm gonna say yes. That puts you in an uncomfortable position because you, you literally could say no and stop, but instead you have to just power through and say yes. I did this actually for about three months once. One of the hardest three months of my life, but looking back, I mentioned that three months all the time because it was one of the most fulfilling, amazing experiences. The amount of just like activities, all that sort of stuff was at an all time high and I don't regret a single moment of it. It's something worth trying and I suggest it just like, again, in baby steps, but try to be a yes man or yes woman for just a period of time. Number four, don't give up. So there is this moment, like let's say, let's use running as an example. You're running, you're running, and there's a moment where you're like, all right, I'm tired. I really don't wanna go anymore. I would say most people stop there. I stop there a lot of times. But 
There is a scenario where if you just get past that moment, you can get a second wind. You can power through that kind of moment and all of a sudden go way past what you normally do. This is totally doable, but most of us just give up in that moment. And that moment is I think where champions are made. And lastly, confide in a friend or get some accountability. Because I tell you, if this is a solo game, it's a lot harder because the only one that knows you're going through this game is you. Let's say your goal is to be more social and meet new friends and new people. If you confide that in a friend, then they will either notice that you're doing it or not. Or they'll ask you about it. Hey, how's that thing going where you're trying to make new friends? Have you been able to do that? And when you have someone that you've already told about that, now it's a game where you're not the only one involved. Someone else is also invested in you. Now, obviously that can make you feel like shit if you keep disappointing them over and over again, but maybe you just don't wanna let your friend down and, and have the same answer again. It helps you to stay accountable and just keep going. Anyway, I've rambled long enough, but this has been important to me because this has been something that's been struggling in my mind and I want to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Bit of a different video than normal, but thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> My name is Mark Kwok. I'll see you guys on the next one.